What's up, everybody? James Duggan with IGN Access. Joining me is Ryan McCaffrey to talk about the Xbox One X. We are at E3 2017, and of all the IGN editors, you've probably got the most time with it, so I have to ask, have you noticed any differences? Is the performance significantly better? What do you think? I mean, I've seen plenty of beautiful-looking games. It's tough because, you know, this is a console that we're seeing for the first time, and we don't have any regular Xbox versions to compare them to, really, like Assassin's Creed Origins, for example. Gorgeous game. I mean, boy, you can see the high budget for that game on the screen, but it's only here on the X, not on the S as well, to really get a side-by-side -side look. But I will say, I mean, typical of 4K TVs, the bigger you go, the more prominent the difference is. And most of the monitors we're playing on are, are a bit smaller because you're sitting three feet from them, but can't deny everything definitely looks good. I want to pose a question to you uh, that you actually posed initially and wrote this fantastic article. You can check it out on IGN.com. It's called, Who is the Xbox One X for? That's the thing that I can't quite wrap my head around. I mean, it's clearly for the hardcore Xbox One owner that already has an Xbox. You know, they've got a 4K TV, they want the best. The thing I question is if you're a vanilla PS4 owner, should I leave the PlayStation ecosystem that I'm already in for this Xbox X that's $100 more? Like, third-party games are obviously the bulk of the video games you play and that are out there. And with those, will developers put in the time to really take the advantage of the extra horsepower that's in the X? So the power disparity between the Xbox One and the Xbox One X is greater than that between the PS4 and PS4 Pro. Yeah. Do you envision a scenario where potentially three years down the line we could get a game that's optimized for the Xbox One X that would be kind of poor performance on the original Xbox One? Is that a concern for you? Uh, I don't know. I mean, Microsoft's been super clear in that everything's an Xbox One game and it'll just be better on the X, but... Inevitably over time, I mean, th this is becoming more and more like a PC type architecture where everything will run, but it's just your hardware gets better and better and better. I would love to see some Xbox One X exclusive games that can just throw out the specs and not even have to code themselves or worry about the, the original Xbox One, but I don't see that happening anytime in the foreseeable future. I think that's, that's a ways out. <gasps> Do you think the Xbox One X sales numbers and uh, overall reception informs if consoles are heading towards a more modular space, and do you think that they kind of are already? I mean, Microsoft has already said we're we're getting rid of generations. This is it. We're just going to be more PC-like going forward and iterate on power, and that's all well and good. Whereas Sony has has not said that. I mean, I think everyone's sort of expecting a PlayStation Five, a new generation, you know, here in two or three years. So. That's where it's going to get interesting is how does the market, your average gamer that's that's propelled the PS4 to 50 plus million sales and a huge lead, you know, if they see a PlayStation 5, holy crap, new generation, whereas uh, Xbox One X or after that maybe Xbox One Y I, or Z, I don't know. Like, it's, it's going to be a really interesting future for consoles. Ryan McCaffrey, thank you so much. All of you watching at home, if you want to see more on the Xbox One X and E3 2017, make sure you keep it locked on IGN.